Steppenwolf is middle management, Batman is a preacher, and I guess they lost budget by the epilogue. This is my review for Zack Snyder's Justice League. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the 2021 Snyder Cut of the uh, few-year-old film Justice League. So I had a chance to watch it over the past couple of days. I actually did split it up because the runtime of the movie is a whopping 4 hours and 2 minutes, so I knew going into it that I probably wouldn't be watching it all in one sitting. Um, I think even with Lord of the Rings... I had to split it up into two parts with the extended version, so it's a long movie and it's hard to keep focus even after um, three hours, so, and probably if I had gone into a well-rested and had some coffee or something, I probably could have pulled, pulled it off, but I didn't want to do all that, so I ended up splitting it into three parts, so for me it worked very, or it worked nicely to split it up into hour and a half, hour and a half, and one hour segments, so the movie in general flew by and did not feel like a long movie. Um, so jumping right into it, I want to say that overall the film was generally better than the Joss Whedon cut of the film, but not because the film was longer by almost double, but because the final act of the film set up a villain that the, the Whedon cut only teased at. So I think, in my opinion, the Justice League would have been uh, considerably better, or at least uh, much better received than it had been if the final act of the film had been the Snyder cut. So for the most of, for the most part both films generally follow the same pacing character development um acting style uh plot progression and all of that in the snyder cut we do get more um on-screen development of the flash and cyborg along with more screen time with steppenwolf trying to find the mother boxes getting them put together additional scenes of him talking with decide another minion of um Dark side who is actually above Steppenwolf in the um, evilness bad guy side of things. So it basically goes Dark side to side, and then Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf is actually still trying to redeem himself in the eyes of Dark side by finding the mother bosses, creating the unity, and allowing Dark side to take over another planet in the form of Earth. So with all of that, I mean, all of that generally works, but if you wanted to keep the film to an approximate two hour length, maybe two and a half hours, um, I would have said to re or keep the Snyder cut of the ending, just because overall that progresses well. You see how close Steppenwolf came to, um, to, to actually completing his task and getting redeemed in the eyes of Darkseid, but ultimately being defeated by the Justice League um, and ultimately opening the portal, um, or having the portal opened and having his body sent back through with a decapitated Steppenwolf. So now Darkseid sees the power of the Justice League, um, and he's pulling off the, or he says he's going to pull it off the old way by sending an armada and going to take over Earth himself. Um, by the end of it, the one thing you do notice is that a lot of the film feels like a copy of what we saw in um, Marvel's the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the Avengers and um, Thanos sending his minions to um, Earth to try to take it over, ultimately using a portal via the Tesseract to try and um, um, send everyone through, and then ultimately sending trying to send a or sending a fleet i guess in the um to earth using still using the time portal by the infinity stones and all of that but regardless of that you get a lot of parallels between the two um justice league kind of summarized all of that granted you only really have six people to worry about with the um i mean even in the avengers you have about the same number of people but the other thing, and this goes back to my re uh, review that I, or thoughts I had on this back when Justice League first came out, is that 
Justice League and the DCU suffers from not having character films already developed to fall back on to understand the styles and motivations of each of the characters, or sorry, for all of the characters. So we 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 have the films for Bat or for Superman and Wonder Woman, but we don't have anything for Batman. We don't have anything for. Um, Cyborg or the Flash, so that kind of makes it hard. Batman you could probably get away with if you assume that Justice League is in the same cinematic universe as the Dark Knight trilogy, so ultimately um, at the end of the Dark Knight trilogy we have Bruce Wayne and Batman giving up the mantle. Um, you could technically put a, even put a, just a Robin movie in the middle of there um, based on the ending of the Dark Knight trilogy and have um, something happened to him because of the Joker Batman coming in to try and save him and it not working which leads us into um, Batman v Superman so um, overall that things like that make for a harder watch but at least with the Snyder cut of Justice League that generally f um, fixes the film on in and of itself because we have we realize that Steppenwolf is ultimately trying to get redeemed into the eyes of Darkseid and get back and, and rejoin his ranks by not having Darkseid show up at the end of the film in the Whedon cut. It makes it just that, that Steppenwolf is trying to um, take over Earth for himself, even though he's doing it in Darkseid's name. So it makes it feel also kind of feel like Darkseid might have already been destroyed, or he's trying to resurrect Darkseid. Basically, there's too many questions in the Snyder or the, in the Whedon cut to make it um, a good enough film on its own. It, to me, it wasn't necessarily a bad film; it was just incomplete. So the Snyder cut actually fixes that. Um, so as far as watching the film, uh, going back to watching the film, while I watched it in three parts, the film is cut up into six parts, so you could technically watch it in those six parts with the, with inter I think the introduction and the epilogue being two of those. So if you kind of watch the first two parts together, then the rest of them on their own, you kind of get a mini-series feel to it, and the chapters kind of make it work in that you kind of know what's going on you get the film separated into segments so you know what's coming up um but overall i wouldn't i would not necessarily i guess the night the when you watch you know the extended cut or the director's cut of any film you realize that you kind of want the entire film and it's hard to cut things but like i said um if you were to cut stuff, I would say keep the Whedon cut, but replace the third act with the Snyder cut's third act. So overall, the film in general uh, works better. So if I were to recommend either film, I would definitely recommend the Snyder cut. It is a more complete film. It is more hashed out. You have more interactions and character development. Um, the only character that I still didn't like in the film in general was Bruce Wayne. Um, just because, or for one part is a serious part, one part is a silly part, but the part that I didn't like was that as being the world's greatest detective, he spent a lot of time talking about he's doing, building all of this on faith rather than um, showing why he's the world's greatest detective. Um, you can't just show the bad computer, him driving, him around as Batman or him driving around bringing people together and saying that this has got to work. Um, he's... Granted, he's trying to um, avoid the premonition he had in his dream for, for the nightmare sequence, but um, in general, that doesn't really play as much of a part so much as it would have been better. Instead, basically, it could have been fixed just by him saying, instead of, I'm doing this, or you gotta have faith, Alfred, you got. If he had said instead that he's um, doing this because he's because of the number of reasons he's um he has ties to star labs with um cyborg and he knows about one of the mother bosses he's trying to track it down all of that would have generally worked better in order to make the make it a better reason for him to bring the team together and ultimately why they wanted to resurrect superman which speaking of which that was ultimately better in the um snyder cut of the film where we have the team discussing together that they need to bring Superman. It is strange, it is weird, it is unholy, but they need to do it because it's the only way for them to um, resurrect Superman, or, or in order to defeat Darkseid. But to me, that could have all played into the idea that 
if um, they had said that, or um, Bruce Wayne or Batman had said that he's read the energy signatures of the mother boxes, they're somehow tied to Cyborg, but when presented with the idea that they're afraid of Superman, that they were inert during the time that Superman had interacted with them, that that's the reason why they need to use them to resurrect Superman, because ultimately their power can be disrupted, they can be brought down, they can be torn apart, and all of that stuff, so things like that could have been solved, so it's, even in the Snyder Cut, it doesn't it goes a lot further than the Whedon cut to make the film better and the film more watchable but it didn't take it far enough and to me replacing the idea of Batman being happy and smiling and being in a generally positive mood and relying on faith rather than his deductive skills generally makes it harder for me to continue to like the character or at least like the character in this format so that's one of those things that's the up and down of the film. So that's really the bulk of it. If um, if I were to give it a grade, I would probably give it about an A- minus to a B plus. I'd probably give it right around that a 90% range of grade. Um, just because overall it's a much better film than the Weed and Cut. It's a lot more complete and hashed out. But um, little things seem to fall apart for me. Um, probably the highlight of the film, in my opinion, is the epilogue where we get a scene of uh, Batman, um, Deadshot I think it is, I forget what, or, um, I forget that character's name, but um, Deadshot, Mira, and um, Joker, I want to say, and Aquaman, or not Aquaman, but I want to say one more character, I think. I forget who the, the, I want to say there's one more character, but definitely those four. They're sitting outside of what looks like maybe Gotham or Metropolis. They're wondering what to do about a uh, now desolate looking wasteland of Earth and Superman who's turned to what looks like Darkseid's side and how they're going to defeat him. They have to continue to stay moving and hidden in order to stay off the radar and complete their plan. They're ultimately discovered by Superman, but they need to figure out how to defeat him and tur or turn him back to the um, the good side. So overall, a very interesting and a good epilogue. I kind of hope that they would have the scene from the trailer um, about, um, I think it's something along the lines of justice or good men don't stay good or something along those lines but overall a very intriguing epilogue and it sets up um the what could potentially be a justice league 2 or basically whatever form they decide to take as far as um dark side taking or finally arriving on earth to take on earth and the justice league so that's all there is for that so um, if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and of course if you want to help support the show get um, uh, early access to content bonus content including bonus content coming up for this episode for this review, be sure to support and check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that's all there is for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.